Section 7.2, ClinVar. 7.2.1, Achievements. Maduri Hegde. I have been involved in ClinVar from early on and am thrilled the submission rate now is quite high. ClinVar has come a long way with regard to how laboratories are now understanding what to submit. Additionally, laboratories seem to understand the difference between ClinVar and HGMD, the Human Gene Mutation Database. Christine Stanley. ClinVar has contributed to transparency in the industry. Elaine Lyon. ClinVar is becoming a pretty good database when multiple people are in accordance on whether a variant is benign. When there are no contradictions across entries, ClinVar is a particularly efficient database. In ClinVar, I really appreciate when people who have submitted have provided references with their description, enabling me to go to the original source. This improves transparency for the rationale, rather than assuming I will just take someone's word for their description. 7.2.2 Challenges and Outdated Classifications Maduri Hegde ClinVar still needs significant cleanup. For example, there are still variants that we know are benign that remain classified as pathogenic on ClinVar. Given the, given the global use of ClinVar, nuances persist that can be Kid that can be dangerous. Christine Stanley. The biggest failures in ClinVar are a tagging variants added to ClinVar as pathogenic based on the variant being discussed in an OMIM review, OMIM review, rather than tagging them as informative, and b excessively pressuring labs to deposit all or a large percentage of variants rather than letting labs choose the variants that they thoroughly reviewed, and C, allowing labs to continue to add variant classifications to ClinVar when they have had a large percentage of incorrect classifications in the past. I would also recommend an ability to provide feedback on agreement or disagreement with another lab's review, and allow labs to contest a review or recommend redacting a review. Inaccurate legacy classifications are a big problem for databases such as ClinVar. Julie Eggington. Some clinical labs use ClinVar classifications in their reports without any quality checks, even single observations, then submit those same classifications back into ClinVar as their own. This results in false consensus. Mechanisms should be put in place to stop this practice since an increasing number of labs use consensus as a trigger to pass a variant classification on to clinical reports without review. Ian Kerr. As a community, we should have the decency to say that, given emerging evidence, we wrongly classified a variant. At the time, the classification may have been completely reasonable. Biology is dynamic, and dogma is often challenged. I consider incorrect classifications to be in the vast minority of cases. However, we should actively reassess these variants as new data become available. Elaine Lyon. We need to be aware of the difference between contradicting evidence and outdated evidence. If data from 1995 indicate pathogenicity, but current data indicate no pathogenicity, the data from 1995 can be considered outdated. This distinction, however, can be confusing. 7.2.3 Considerations for Food and Drug Administration Approved Variant Classifications Elaine Lyon It is critical we remember that FDA-approved variant classifications in ClinVar are still expert opinions. Certainly, I feel better that a group of experts in a certain disease have reviewed the variants, especially if this comes with a publication describing their approach. My concern, however, is that some people will take FDA approvals as the truth, which they may or may not be. Maduri Hegde. It is dangerous to go in the direction of relying on expert committees for FDA-approved classifications in ClinVar, especially for the way approvals are made with points in a star classification. Compounding the issue, publications are occurring for one modification or for modification of a certain criteria the application of which is uncertain. The potential for someone to then go through the ClinVar SOP program and rely on the STAR classification without applying critical analysis could create a dangerous situation because a lot more sequencing from diverse populations need to, needs to occur. 
though we do not need to worry about variants that are obviously benign. We are additionally moving in the direction of very rare variant burden and polygenic risk scores where the effects of these variants are unknown. We are narrowing our focus too much rather than evaluating a global perspective of what it means to do clinical genetics and clinical testing.